Hello everyone, my name is Mr. G, and I welcome you to my new series, Monsters of the Past. However, before we get into anything, I think it's important to describe what this series is and why I'm doing it. In the 2000s, there were these cards called Weird and Wild Creatures, and they came in seven different sets. There was Monsters of the Past, which talked about animals that are extinct. Nightmares of Nature, which talked about animals with scary attributes. Toxic Terrors, which talked about animals that are either poisonous or venomous. Monsters of the Deep, which talked about scary sea creatures. Tiny Terrors, which talked about small animals. Strange Wonders, for animals that almost sound made up. And Monsters of the Mind, for animals that actually are made up. One day, I looked at these cards and realized that in, since in three years they're going to turn 20 years old, then now would be a good time to give them a little bit of an update in the form of a miniature documentary series. I will definitely be doing Monsters of the Past and Monsters of the Mind, since those two are part of fields that are ever-changing in what we know about them. I'll consider doing the other ones, but there's no guarantee. Just these two. So without further ado, let me explain the rules of this series and how it'll work. Each video in the series will be divided into three different sections. In section one, I'll be giving a brief overview of the creature itself, its biology, where it lived, what it, what it was, and other facts about it. These won't go on for too long since I don't want these videos to become like 20 minutes long. In section two, I'll be comparing it to the card and see how well the card has aged compared to what we know nowadays. In section three, I'll be talking about the creature's other appearances in pop culture. So with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started with our first animal. It's the most famous dinosaur of them all. You know it. You love it. You've probably seen it in a bunch of movies. It's the one and only Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus, meaning tyrant lizard, was a member of the Tyrannosaur family, which were a group of theropod dinosaurs. Like most theropods, it was a meat eater. It was among one of the last dinosaurs to ever live, living at the tail end of the Cretaceous era. And it lived all throughout North America. Tyrannosaurus rex was discovered in the year 1900 by, by museum curator Barnum Brown. And like most theropods of the time, it was depicted in an upright stance like a kangaroo. I'll be talking more about why they did this in my Megalosaurus video, since I think that'd be a better time to talk about the history of theropod recreations. Tyrannosaurus rex was 40 feet long, and though it wasn't the biggest theropod dinosaur, it was one of the biggest, and it was the biggest member of the Tyrannosaur family. T-Rex had a mouthful of teeth that were 6 inches long. These teeth were incredibly powerful, being able to break through bones and be able to keep a good grip on the prey's neck. T-Rex is also theorized to have had one of the most powerful bite forces of any animal ever. And contrary to what Jurassic Park says, T-Rex is actually believed to have some of the best eyesight in the animal kingdom, being even better than a hawk's. Now, when talking about Tyrannosaurus Rex, there are three debates that we must absolutely talk about. 1. Was T-Rex a scavenger? In the 90s, famous paleontologist Jack Horner proposed a theory that the T-Rex wasn't an apex predator, but rather was a scavenger that feasted on the remains of other animals that were either already dead or chased away other smaller predators from their kills. He based this theory on the fact that T-Rex had incredibly small arms that couldn't pin down prey, the fact that T-Rex seemed to have an incredibly good sense of smell, which might have been used to find dead bodies, and the fact that its teeth were great at breaking bones, much like hyenas, which are notorious for being mostly scavengers. This theory is very controversial among paleontologists for several reasons. One was because there is no other predator big enough to take down animals like Triceratops or Ankylosaurus that we have discovered yet. Two is that we've actually found fossils from other animals that have T-Rex bite marks in them that seem to be in the process of healing, meaning that it attacked a live animal. Three, the fact that it couldn't use its arms was kind of irrelevant since a lot of other dinosaurs had small arms, but that doesn't mean they were all scavengers. Nowadays, no, almost nobody takes this theory seriously, and nowadays it's kind of fizzled into the backwater of paleontological debates. Debate number two, Nanotyrannus. In 1988, the skull was discovered of a theropod dinosaur from the same place as T-Rex. It appeared to have been a smaller relative of the T-Rex. It was named Nanotyrannus, and for many years it was thought to be a separate species than T-Rex. However, in recent years, more and more paleontologists are believing that Nanotyrannus was simply the adolescent stage of Tyrannosaurus rex. And in fact, nowadays, almost nobody actually believes that Nanotyrannus was its own species anymore. And finally, the biggest one, did T-Rex have feathers? As more and more feathered dinosaurs are discovered, this leads paleontologists to have one important question. Did T-Rex have feathers? 
Several other theropod dinosaurs have feathers, and even other tyrannosaurs have feathers, such as D-Long and Eutyrannus. However, we have found no direct evidence that T-Rex itself had feathers. Eventually, skin impressions of a T-Rex are found, showing that its scales were incredibly tiny, and from a distance it would almost look like human skin. This doesn't rule out feathers completely, as they could have had feathers along their backs, or like a feather mane. However, this rules out the idea that T-Rex were completely covered in feathers like some of its relatives. It just goes to show how interesting dinosaurs can be, and that just because their relatives had something doesn't mean that they all had it. Now that we've talked about T-Rex itself, let's see how well its card has held up over the years. Well, first of all, they spelled it T-Rex when it's supposed to be spelled T-Rex. Also, you don't capitalize Rex since it's the species name. You only capitalize the genus name. But other than that, this design has held up fairly well. It's uh, clearly based on the Jurassic Park design, like most T-Rex appearances are. So, uh, yeah. But other than that, there's not really much to talk about. It's uh, pretty accurate for the time. It's held up pretty well, besides the scale, since as I said earlier, T-Rex skin looked like human skin from a distance. But there's no way they could have known that at the time. And there's no feathers either, but we don't even know if there was feathers on T-Rex, so I'm not going to fault them too much for that. Overall, in terms of aging well, I'd give this card an 8 out of 10 in terms of accuracy today. And to end this video off, let's talk about T-Rex's appearances in pop culture. T-Rex has appeared in hundreds of films, TV shows, and video games. That listing all of its appearances would take about an hour, so for this segment I'll only be looking at the really notable appearances. Now, we can't talk about T-Rex in pop culture without talking about the Jurassic Park franchise. T-Rex first appeared in the novel, and since then, has appeared in every single film since. And this is by far the most famous appearance of T-Rex. I mean, who could forget the scene in the first film, where the T-Rex slowly stomps out of the electric gate that got its power cut off, and then it looks around and lets out a mighty roar. To this day, it's still one of the greatest moments in cinematic history, and probably one of the best-looking visual effects ever. Since then, T-Rex has appeared in basically every piece of Jurassic Park media ever made. In fact, I challenge you to find me a piece of Jurassic Park media that doesn't have a T-Rex. Actually, that's literally impossible since the series mascot is literally a T-Rex skeleton. But that's enough about Jurassic Park, let's give some other fictional T-Rexes some love. A T-Rex appears during the Rite of Spring segment of Fantasia. It was pretty accurate for the time, but the only thing that was inaccurate even at the time was, was the fact that it had three fingers, which even at the time paleontologists knew was too much. In the film, it's basically seen running around chasing things for a bit before it gets into a fight with a stegosaurus, which it promptly kills and lets out a roar. And later, in the same segment, a T-Rex is seen dying from dehydration. So yeah, like I said, this portrayal was accurate for the time, but it obviously has not aged well at all, considering the kangaroo stance and the boxy head. But by 1940s standards, they did a pretty good job. Except for the three fingers thing, though. That, there was no excuse for that. A T-Rex is also the main antagonist of the Don Bluth film Land Before Time, where like all theropod dinosaurs, they're referred to as sharp teeth. This portrayal is obviously based on the T-Rex from Fantasia, as such it has many of the same inaccuracies, such as the boxy head and kangaroo stance, but at least it only has two fingers. So, bonus points to Don Bluth. In the Toy Story franchise, one of the main characters is a, t is a Tyrannosaurus named Rex. I'm not going to fault him for inaccuracies too much since he is a toy, and dinosaur toys are notorious for being horribly inaccurate. In the movie King Kong, the titular ape at one point fights a T-Rex when it tries to eat his girlfriend. So King Kong gets into a wrestling match with the beast. In the 2005 remake, they were replaced with a fictional species called Vastatosaurus, and instead of fighting one of them, he fights a whole pack of them. According to supplementary material, V-Rex is actually a descendant of T-Rex, so uh, I guess they count here? A purple T-Rex named Barney is also the star of the show Barney the Dinosaur. A fictional species of Tyrannosaurus named Tyrannosaurus Dominium appears in the video game Ark Survival Evolved. Although in-game, they're still called T-Rexes. I'm not going to fault them too much for inaccuracy, since this game actually gives an explanation as to why so many of the creatures are inaccurate, but I'm not going to spoil it here. The main character of the PBS kids show, Dinosaur Train, is a T-Rex named Buddy. And finally, T-Rex's tiny arms make it the butt of many, many jokes. Well, that's all for today.
and I hope to see you again next time when I talk about the second most famous dinosaur and our first Jurassic dinosaur. So, until next time, I'm Mr. G, and now I'm out.